Hey, Raptor Razor here live. It should show streams. This is the first time we've done this, so uh, we're figuring out as we go. Are you showing any people signing on? No, but you're live. Oh, oh one person. Mosquitoes are eating me. Yeah, two people. Two people. Aloha from Hawaii. It's uh, about 5 o'clock uh, Hawaii time, 4.30. What time is it, Kill? I don't know. 5 04.35. 5.05. Uh, we just got a couple pigs today, and we're going to do a live demonstration uh, using the knife. Uh, we're going to pull the uh, Hydro Dip combo right out of the box and throw it together real quick. It's just a matter of second to get these uh, going. You got the built-in screwdriver, removable bit. It's got the bit holder inside, so it doesn't take a whole lot. It becomes a uh, multi-tool. But we're going to do a uh, live demonstration, uh, gutless method. We've got two pegs down, and uh, we're going to show you how quick and easy it is to do the gutless method. And uh, feel free to answer or ask any questions as we go along. How many people we got now? 45. 45, right on. We got the Mako, got the big game scanner, blades already assembled. And then we got our other assortment of knives. Uh, we got the fillet kit. We just put the saw blade in, and then our assortment of uh, fillet blades. So without any further ado, uh, we're going to get busy. Here's the pigs. Now when I, when I do most animals, I'll go with the grain of the hide. Uh, with pigs, they're so thick between the ears, I always start at the tail, work my way back up. So I'll make an incision right at the tail. Come this way. And then it's just a matter of coming right back up. Now, the main thing with the big game skinner is let the blade do the work. A lot of guys will come in, they'll yank on this, and what happens is, let's do the side profile. What happens, the harder you pull, it pivots in your hand. So if you're at this position, you're going to fight it. So what I like to do is actually grab the hide. And I'm not, I'm not pulling very hard because I don't want to dig into the back strap. So you're just going right up to the top. And now we come in with the Ulu blade. And we're just going to skin. But actually, the, before we take the back strap off, we're going to take the front shoulder off. So we're doing 360 around the leg. And then we come right back up. And sometimes with a smaller pig, it takes a second to get here. Now as you get here, you see how I went a little deep? You gotta go a little bit softer, hold the leg. You can choke up on the knife. You can hold your finger on the knife to keep it from rotating. But you don't have to pull that hard. And as you get through, right through the top. You never want to try to cut through uh, loose skin. If you try cutting back the other way, you'll have trouble. With a deer and an elk, you always want to roll that head forward. So take the horns, roll the head forward so the neck is nice and uh, tight. And then we're just coming in with the big game skinner. And you're just pushing your way through with the knife. And again, we're doing the gutless technique. Uh, those of you that are squeamish, uh, please don't watch. Uh, you know, we're not gonna be opening up the, the stomach. As you can see, there's very little blood. It's real clean. That's why I love the gutless technique. It doesn't make sense to uh, start off the process covered in blood and bacteria. 
from the animal and then you're transferring all that to the different cuts of meat. So we're just taking our time here. And we got a headshot on both these guys. So we got good all four quarters. Rib cages are even good. And unfortunately, I don't have my sidekick Rowdy, so uh, we got to kind of <laughs> improvise as we take this leg off. And I'm just jiggling it. And the nice thing about this knife is you're not going to cut yourself. If you're pulling the knife, the tip of the blade is actually radius, so you not you don't run a risk of stabbing yourself. You'll definitely cut yourself if you're not careful with the back ulu blade. So always be careful. And catch that. Now, being as I don't have help, I'm actually going to pop this leg off before we even get started. taking the big game scanner and we just take that front shoulder off there's no bone so we don't need the Mako to cut through that's your first quarter you throw that right on ice now the next step this opens it up for the back strap So I, I only skin the portion of meat that we're going to take. So that, that front shoulder, we open up the back strap. That back strap is going to come right along here. You can actually see the meat in uh, I'm going to rinse my hands real quick. Make sure I'm not transferring mud to the meat. So as I come down, I find the hip bone, that's where I'm going to start the, the back strap. So I come back at a 45, and then I'm, I'm finding that spine, and rather than cutting this way into the meat, I cut down to the bone. That, that allows me to find the bone, and I'm not wasting any meat when I'm uh, taking the back strap out. I'm just cutting right down and once we get it started we can easily peel it out now without a demonstration and, and going slow and kind of showing each each cut we can do a pig in just over 10 minutes doing the gutless technique same with the deer and you can see the way I'm holding this knife. It becomes the extension of your finger. Uh, you don't get the hand fatigue you get with a conventional knife. And we always like to take that back strap up as high as we can, up to the ears if it allows us. And then uh, that's your first back strap. We're coming to the hind leg. We throw the hide back over, it protects the rib cage. And then same thing, we're 360 around the hock. And we want to make sure we're below far enough where that joint is so we can uh, pop the joint more easily. And then I just come back and again, I'm choking up on the knife. I'm not grabbing until I get it started. Once it's started, it's just nice and easy. Now the, the hind quarter, it's a little bit different. You don't want to pull deep. You can just pull nice and easy. 
because if you go too deep, the hide's so tight that you'll end up cutting through that hind quarter. But this is where you really make up the time, you know, not only in the precision cuts, but in the speed of the skinner. And as you can see, I'm just jiggling it. We can jiggle the knife uh, as we're cutting through. I'll also, on an elk or a big animal with a tough hide, I'll grab the hide, I'll lift up, and I'll pull in the opposite direction as I'm cutting through. So it's a scissor cut, and uh, you're not always going to get that nice rip. Uh, a lot of times it's better to go slow. Uh, you'll have better quality meat. You don't risk uh, cutting in like I did on the front shoulder into the meat. And we're just jiggling around. You see any questions, Keel? No, nothing yet. How many, how many people we got? Uh, almost 400. 400, awesome. So I hope everyone's having a nice evening. It's Cyber Monday. Uh, take advantage of the sale on Raptor Razor. Uh, these will be the best sales of the year, 35% off at raptorrazor.com. And we're just pushing through following that. And again, typically I got help here, but we're just going to make do. And I know a lot of you guys do this hanging. Uh, I prefer doing it on the ground just because you got more control over the animal. It's not swinging. Uh, like most of you, I was taught the conventional way, gut the animal, drag it out, get it back to the truck hours later. And uh, by the time it got skinned, it would be, you know, five to six hours later. And the quality of meat by the time it made it to the dinner table is tough, it's gamey. I've been hunting in Hawaii for 20 years. We do the ice cure on all our meat. It's 80, 90 degree temperature. The last couple of weeks, it's been nice, overcast. Uh, that's how we were able to catch these pigs out uh, in the middle of the day. Uh, usually they won't come out till dark. But uh, with the ice cure, now it's important to always keep your hands clean if possible. Typically in the field, I'll use grass, but we got a little bit of water here. We had to hook up to the Wi-Fi. Now with the hind quarter, most guys will start here and pop the, uh, the joint from the inside. I like to make the cut here, on the same on all animals. You start right at the spine, and you, again, you're finding that hip bone, and you're coming so you don't lose any meat. And that butt bone, it's like a thumb, it's just sticking straight out. And it's a lot easier to cut this back to the hip prior to opening them up especially with a big animal like a moose now you can see there's the hip bone right there and we're down to the meat and then that butt bone is right there so we're gonna get on the other side of that so now this is ready to pop from the inside uh, before we do that though, we're going to pop this back leg because I don't have help. And uh, So on the back leg, all animals have double joints. They have an interlocking joint that I fought most of my life to try to break. Uh, I would cut around, try to break it over my knee, hyperextending it. We're going after the flat joint, which is below the obvious joint. So you see the joint of the animal. There's actually the flat joint's going to be here. So on all animals, run your fingers up the shin bone and where you see the indentation, the dimple of the knuckle. You'll see a little indentation there. That is where you want to go. That is the sweet spot. So I'm hyperextending this down and all we're doing See how quick that was? Not another knife can do what Raptor Razor does. It's so much easier, so much quicker. So now that we got the, the leg off, we 
we're going to make an incision in the hock for a grip. Always use the knife away from you. And then uh, open up the hide. Now when you're at this point, all, we, all you're doing is hyperextend. I like to put my foot under it so I don't risk getting into the dirt. Now bigger animals, it's a lot easier because the weight of the, uh, the hind quarter will pop that joint. You can see right there, that joint. When you got a bigger animal, it's a lot more obvious. But all you gotta do is make it to that joint and then that hind quarter comes right off. We're not wasting any meat, uh, very little waste there. And uh, you know, we're at the flat joint. You can see right there. And uh, again, just run your fingers from the hoof up to the shin. And as soon as you find that knuckle, it's about a half inch above that. It's gonna be the same for deer, elk, buffalo, moose, all, all big game. So typically, if I did a uh, regular front shoulder shot, I wouldn't mess around with the, the ribs. This guy's so small. He's actually been wounded. But I'll show you. You can reach in, get the heart, the liver, and all we're doing is going to that outline of that rib. So when you're at this point, typically I'll come in from the last rib to the hip bone, and that's where your tenderloin is going to be. So we'll do the tenderloin first. So I'll open this up, and that tenderloin is right under the, the short ribs. So think of your back strap, the spine is a T. Your back straps sit on top, your tenderloins are right underneath. And I got a little punch here. That's why I, I typically don't mess around. And you can typically just reach in and pull it out, and there's your tenderloin. We're gonna rinse this off. Okay, we're gonna come back and grab the uh, saw. And all we're doing, we're gonna do everything in a backstroke here. Now, those of you that uh, don't like to see the look, guts, uh, you can pause it, come back to us. But all we're doing is, is just opening it up. And you got the, the lungs up top, you got the diaphragm. Typically, I'll get here, I'll go between the ribs, and I'm always pulling down. It's a little, little bit bloodshot. Uh, axe works real well as, as well. And these are little guys. These ribs on the grill, you can see the diaphragm. We'll just cut that right off. And uh, the stomach, everything stays intact. So there's a nice rib cage. And then we just do the same process. Roll the animal right over. Stand him up. And we're gonna do that front shoulder first. This time I'm gonna go a little bit faster. And it's always good to take the front shoulder off. Uh, those of you that are just joining us, 
what it does is it opens up to get the full back strap. You don't have to fight the, the shoulder blade. Uh, when you're pulling out the back strap, that shoulder blade comes up. And uh, a lot of times you'll fight it and you'll just cut and stop the back strap. Uh, if you want to take, try to take it all the way up to the ears. Now another thing I've seen people do with the big game skinner is they'll use it like this and push through. This, it's not designed to be held that way. There's a right and a left to it. This is right handed. If you switch it around, it becomes left handed. And you don't want to hold it right handed with the handle on left handed. It's designed index finger and <coughs> The long portion of the housing uh, goes to your three fingers. So it switches out real quick. Uh, removable bit. My hands are a little slick. And then it's also got the bit holder. It becomes a multi-tool. Gonna hold this back. And all we're doing is just jiggle, especially around the Achilles and around hard to reach areas. All you got to do is put that housing on the flesh and it becomes a guided skinner. You're less likely to cut the hide, the meat, and you can push through hard to reach spots. And you can kind of just push through. There's your uh, front shoulder. I didn't take the leg off. We'll have to do that in a second. We'll keep that foot out of there. And then we're coming back. And all we got to do is go where that rib cage is. Typically, I won't even, uh, if I shoot a front shoulder shot, I won't skin. We won't mess around with the, the ribs. But as you come here, we're going to find the hip bone, which is right there. Come back at a 45, find the spine. And again, we're, we're not coming this way. We're coming straight down. That enables us to find the spine. And we're just peeling back. And that's what's so great about the, the Mako. It becomes an extension of your finger. You get in there and cup it with white tail, muleys, elk. Uh, it's all the same. You got a lot more control over the knife. There's your back strap. Going to the hind quarter. We're just holding, and I'm not pulling that hard because we don't want to go into the, the meat. You can see how easy that was. As it gets dark and cold, uh, it becomes <laughs> you go a little bit faster. Last thing you want to be is out in the dark. Uh, especially when the sun goes down, the temperature drops below zero. A lot of you guys are going to be doing some winter hunting. We're a little bit spoiled in Hawaii with year-round 75, 80 degree weather. And we get to hunt year-round. So, But 
I wouldn't pass up any elk hunt over over shooting pigs. <laughs> Pig, pigs are uh, a big problem uh, in Hawaii, just like they are in Texas, Louisiana, Mississippi, uh, moving up north into other states. They become a problem. They multiply so fast that you always got to keep them in check. Uh, we don't waste any of the meat. Uh, if we harvest them, we make sure they get eaten. Uh, whether we're giving them to families in need or smoking them ourselves. And there's plenty of families in need that would love to have these pigs. And uh, we're going to make sure they get them. So we got the, the hind quarter done. Those of you that are just tuning in, uh, we're gonna pop the leg. So again, the joint, you have two joints on an animal. You have an interlocking joint, which is very difficult to break through, and you have a flat joint. The flat joint is gonna be closer to the hoof, you, and all animals are the same. Run your fingers up the shin bone, right where you feel the knuckle is where about a half inch up. It's gonna be right about there. What we're gonna do is hyper extend that back leg. And let me see where it's at again. The last one came off real easy. And you can see I'm choking up on the knife uh, to get more control. And uh, it's that quick. Raptor Razor has uh, been a blessing. Uh, we developed this knife out of necessity. We got tired of everything else breaking on the market. It couldn't hold up. And uh, we actually pick up a 800 pound quad. Now you can see what I'm doing. I'll pull the hide out and lay that, that in the hide so it doesn't go in the dirt. But uh, back to the big game Skinner. Uh, lifetime guarantee on the handle and housing not to break. Uh, you have any problems with it, we will replace it. Uh, some of these, you you know, you got to watch uh, getting the hair. They're still not bulletproof. Uh, you know, it's like any other tool. It's how you learn how to use it and using it correctly. You're going to have more success in the field. But uh, lifetime guarantee, we pick up over 800 pounds with this. We pick up a quad. We towed a 1,500-pound Polaris that ran out of juice uh, in Colorado recently. And... Uh, this will get you out of a bind if you're in a pinch. But back to the hind quarter, uh, we always open it up from the top before we split the pelvis. So we're gonna come from the top. We're finding the hip bone where we stop with the back strap. And we're just peeling this back to where we see the, the hip bone, which is gonna be right there. You can see the hip. And now the butt bone is a, a bone that sticks straight out. And you always got to go around it. And it's the same on, on all animals. But it makes it a lot easier when you open this up. And again, I'm putting my foot under it to make sure we're not going in the dirt. And bigger animals are a lot easier because the weight We'll pop that open and then boom. So when you're dealing with a moose or elk where you have 100 pounds, 200 pounds on a hind quarter, especially with a moose, uh, you're gonna wanna do that pre-cut. That way, when you're cutting through this, you don't waste that, that top piece of meat that typically would get wasted. With our moose this year, we actually laid a tarp on the backside and just rolled it over let the weight we did our, our cut on the spine first and we were able to just lay that hind quarter right on the tarp okay we're gonna wrap this up show you how to get the tenderloin again real quick and uh, this one I, I won't open up the rib cage but you find the last rib which is there the hip bone open your hip bone up and there's your short rib right here your tenderloin, if you can see that, that's your tenderloin right there. And it's tenderloin for a reason. It's your juiciest, tenderest piece of meat. 
and uh, it only takes a second to pop out. Typically, all you got to do is cut back on the inside to there, reach in, and then just cut each end. And there is your, your full tenderloin. So uh, if anyone's got any questions, uh, now's the time to ask. We're gonna be wrapping this up. I'll pull the rib cage off here in a second. And uh, you got all your cuts of meat uh, in the cooler. We're gonna take the rib cage off and uh, check us out. RaptorRazor.com worked up a little bit of a sweat. And uh, Cyber Monday, 35% off to the 1st of December the end of the month uh, take advantage of the offer today uh, check us out on YouTube for helpful tips on the gutless technique and don't hesitate to call us our office number is 808-638-8281 if you have any questions unfortunately the Badlands and the real tree were a big success this year uh, we sold out of uh, both of those uh, but we have plenty of the hydro combo in stock and it comes in a kit just like this you get the big game skinner the mako and what it comes with is your protective guards this will accommodate both the five inch and the, the standard four inch so the five inch fits in there you get seven blades now this is a marine blade what this does we eliminate the ulu blade on the bottom this becomes more of a safety knife and it's for the conventional hunters that are going to gut their animal when they're pulling through the stomach they don't have to worry about the intestines rolling up uh, and getting nicked by the ulu blade so this is uh, the marine blade you get one of those you get three of the big game skinner blades and three of the mako blades now the other thing we've come out with is the the handle is universal it goes from injection to aluminum uh, all the knife you can switch them out we also came up with the 16 inch meat hook great for dragging out animals a hay hook uh, fishing gaff and then also with the handle we have the survival compartment on the end you got a compass you have a bit holder and you can switch out if you get in a bind you don't have to take your leatherman with you uh, you can switch out you got a little magnet in there to hold it in place and what we did is you take the survival compartment out you also have extra screws two extra screws in each handle in case you lose one in the field and then the sharpening rod goes right where the survival compartment is so that screws right on, universal to all. The blades are 420 stainless steel. They can be resharpened. It doesn't take a whole lot. We've never had any of our blades break on us. Uh, a lot safer to switch out blades and you can definitely keep tuning it up uh, for years to come. Uh, I like to uh, actually go through the blades and then I'll tune up the blades and then run them through again. Big Game Scanner is a little bit harder but uh, the blades are so thin that it doesn't take a whole lot to tune them up. So whether you want a factory edge each time, most blades will get you through three to five pigs of this size, uh, deer, three to five deer. It's all how you use the knife. So uh, I hope our, our demonstration has been helpful. And until next time, check us out at raptorrazor.com. I'm Rick and uh, I'd love to hear from you. Keep in touch, take advantage of our promo for Cyber Monday. It's gonna be cyber at our website, raptorracer.com. Aloha.